Welcome to my mayor's message for March 2022. I'm Mayor Ron Jensen. Earlier this month, I held my state of the city. COVID kept us from being able to host the event in 2021. So this year, it was extra special for me to be able to see everyone and celebrate the city together in person. What a difference a year has made for Grand Prairie. Since my last state of the city, the vision for Epic Central is coming to fruition. Here's a recap of some of the development news I shared at State of the City. Construction at Epic Central is underway for two hotels with a connecting convention center, parking garage, and restaurant row. The hotels and convention centers are expected to open by late 2023. Some of the restaurants joining the already open chicken and pickle include Upscale Vadora Casino de Mexico, expected to open this summer. A new neighborhood restaurant and bar concept called Finch, it's expected to open early fall. Serious Pizza, Sliders and Shakes, opening late fall. And a new breakfast brunch concept called Poached, opening early 2023. Larry Levine, the founder of Chili's, will open Loop 9 Barbecue in a fifth space this summer. Boulder Adventure Indoor Park will also be opening this summer. Boulder Adventure Park is an indoor family entertainment facility that will provide rock climbing, zip lines, rope courses, tubing slides, synthetic ice skating, that's my kind of ice skating because it's not cold, adventure nets, and more. Grand Prairie is its first location nationwide. If you're near that area, you will see their huge dome, which went up earlier this month. Other restaurants going in along 161 include Dutch Brothers Coffee, Lucky's Hot Chicken, Salad and Go, and Rosa's Mexican Cafe. The event was live streamed via Facebook for those unable to attend. You can watch the entire video available now on the city's Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Another big announcement I made is that on April 12th, the city is introducing Via Grand Prairie, an on-demand microtransit for all residents. This low-cost transit system will pick up Grand Prairie residents and take them anywhere in Grand Prairie, as well as UTA, TCC, Mountain View College, and Dallas Baptist University. Via will operate Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., and pricing will be $3 to $4 per ride. Riders will be able to book Via Grand Prairie through an app, over the phone, or online. More information will be released on our website, gptx.org. We are still accepting applications for the Traffic Signal Box Art Program. We are looking for Texas artists who want to help beautify our community. Art can be directly painted on the boxes or be a digitally printed wrap. Applications are open through April 28th. For details and to apply, visit gptx.org. Lastly, I visited our newly renovated fire station number three, located at the corner of Robinson and 161. Chief Fight and the firefighters showed me around the station, and I even got a special surprise. Take a look. Hey, we're at the new station number three. I'm with Chief Fight. Chief. Before we go into the station to take a tour, tell us what's going on out here with the new water tower pump station and everything. Yeah, so uh, a couple years ago when our public works director told us all about the new water tower, the new water tower is planned to go literally on top of old fire station three. Since that was built in 1958 and we had a plan to rebuild it anyway, it just worked out that we purchased this land, vacated the fire station, and now the new water tower can go in. So thanks to Gabe, he helped make this happen. Right, and we're building a new pump station right next yep. door. When do you think the everything will be finished right out here behind us? I think Gabe told us uh, 20, 24, 25. This will look totally different when that brand new water tower with the new technology look, the smaller, you know, smaller cone. It will look great right here. Well, tell our citizens what's housed here at Station 3, including the Scorpion. Yeah, so Station 3, uh, old Fire Station 3 had an ambulance and fire engine. That's all we could fit. This Fire Station 3 has the ambulance and fire engine, but we also have our blocker engine, which we call the Scorpion, which is what keeps us safe on the highways. We also have the Battalion Chief. Battalion Chief is split into two zones, north and south. Here we have Battalion 1, who's the North Battalion. Since 161 is right here, he can get anywhere 
any time. Yes. So let's go in and show let's us around. It. Let's do it. So what do we have here, Chief? Well, Mayor, so this is an accumulation of your police and fire department growing. You know, we were down at the uh, Charles England Center, mm -hmm. partnered with the police and sharing all that space. They've got so many police academies going. We've got our training going that we literally did not have the space we were competing for the seats in the classroom. So when I talked to former city manager Tom Hart when we were going to build this, I said, "Let allow me to add a training room and some offices, and we'll get out of this. We'll get out of the CVE and turn that over to the police." So this is our own internal training room. Uh, this is where we do our medical CE, our internal fire CE. And we, now we just, we didn't want to lose our police partners, but it just was too small. I, I can understand. Look at this great facility, and it takes continuous training yeah. to keep up with things. Without a doubt. Remember, we're firefighter, paramedics, and we still have 10 of our firefighters are also police officers. So that requires even more training. Good. Yeah. So tell us what's going on in here. Well, uh, this is the heart of every fire station, is this, the kitchen and the day room. This is where every world problem is solved. <laughs> That's right, around that table. And sometimes department problems are created. <laughs> uh, but truly, this is our family time. We, we eat, we train, we laugh, sometimes we cry. This is it. This is where it all happens, just in this area. It's great. And look around here. They can lounge and watch some TV. This is a very sleep station, so they're up most of the night. You know, a downtime, we don't mind that. It's not right. a big deal. No, because sleep. they are up, up most of the night. So, Mayor, this room is a, is a pressurized airlock. Wow. So if you think about all the diesel contaminants in our bay, now, granted, we have very smart fire engines that have the, de the DEF fluid, but there's still huge diesel contaminants. Years ago, it gets right into the fire station, but this is pressurized to keep everything in the bay. So we have a transition and both ways have it. That is super. So Chief, while we're talking about that, explain to our citizens what we're doing to prevent cancer and why we need to prevent cancer. Yeah, you know, the fire service, we just figured this out in the past 10 years that we're not breathing in the carcinogens, we're absorbing it in our skin. So we now have to change everything we do on the fire ground, but we also have to change how the station is. You already saw the airlocks, but let me show you a few other things. You bet. So this is, this room is our gear room and it's negative pressure. Okay. So all the air in here is being sucked out. Through so the it city. doesn't get out so there. So it doesn't get out there. But granted, all the gear in here is clean because we have, every firefighter has two sets of gear. When they get their first set dirty, we bag it up, treat it as cancer itself, and they get their second gear until it's clean. And we can treat it here on site. And I'm going to show you that. We will treat it here on site. But this is a different room. It's negative pressure. Everybody's individualizing their second set of gears here. Let's tell our citizens why it's important to be treating this cancer and what the statistics are for a firefighter. Yeah, you know, as a firefighter, uh, we're about 9 to 10% more likely to get cancer. Actually, in my opinion, it's 50% more yeah. likely because the general public is around 20%. Right. A firefighter is 30%. 30. So that would be a good way to look at it. General public's 20, we're about 30. Uh, and Texas has 11 cancers that are considered work-related, which means workers comp, which means money directly out of the city risk fund. So it's 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 my duty, not only fiduciary, but just to be to do what's right. To do what's right. To try to prevent our cancer for our firefighters and their families. So that is there's two big reasons for them and for the city. Mm -hmm. Well thank you. So this is another uh, sort of cancer prevention mayor. I mentioned that everybody has two sets of gear. Mm -hmm. This is a professional industrial extractor that's programmed specifically for our gear. Our fire gear has Kevlar, it has other very expensive materials that can only be spun at a certain revolutions per minute. Mm. So this cleaner, we call it an extractor, cleans the gear, gets all the contaminants out of it, we dry it, just natural dry, and then they're good to go. So after every fire, every station has one of these, they bring their dirty gear bagged in here, 
They wear gloves, they don't touch it. It goes in the extractor and it gets cleaned. So had we not had a double set, a duplicate set, they would have to wait they would to go back out. out. We'd either have to put the station out of service, mm -hmm. which is not fair to the citizens, or they wear dirty gear until the next shift, which is not fair to them. So this is new. You said in the last 10 years, yeah. and fire departments all over the country are going to this because yeah. they've realized yeah. how, how significant the cancer risk is yeah. for firefighters. Sadly, when I was a rookie in the 80s, the dirtier you were, the cooler you were. <laughs> We went home smelling like smoke. We thought it was a bravado badge. And little did we know, it was just killing us. Yeah. So that is, those days are gone. You won't see a dirty helmet. You won't see dirty gear, period. But they still get the job done. Still get the they job. go in, they have oxygen. Yep. They're just, we're taking better care of them individually and their, their gear. Our fire ground, everything is different. When they leave, how they leave, everything is different than it was 10 years ago. Now, folks, they don't get to fight too many fires. On a given week, most of their calls are medical. Yeah. Touch on that a little bit. Yeah, 71% of our calls are medical. And the other 30% are fire-related uh, car wrecks and those type of things. So the vast majority of what we do for our citizens is in the back of the ambulance. And you know the awards we won with the American Heart Association and all those, you have one of the greatest EMS services, and we can thank your council and Tom Hart for that. You bet. So uh, predominantly what we do is EMS, and oh yeah, we buy fire. So Mayor, one last thing. You have always been an unbelievable champion of our department. I mean, you know as much about the cancer <laughs> prevention as I do. Uh, every firefighter knows our council supports us. So we wanted to make sure you know that we Appreciate you. Oh my goodness. And we have an authentic leather fire helmet with your name. I love this. And we spelt it right too. You did. <laughs> now, I'm not going to go fight a fire, but I'm real proud of this. Thank you very much. One, two, three. See you next month.